Welcome to Raising OKC Kids, Conversations with Metro Family in Oklahoma City. I'm Erin Page, and today joining me is Jenna Mori, Executive Director of Remerge, a local nonprofit organization dedicated to restoring women to their families and the community. The organization's pre-trial diversion program serves high-risk, high-needs mothers facing nonviolent felony offenses in Oklahoma County. Welcome, Jenna, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with you today. I appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. We're glad to have you. So, Jenna, to start us off, we know that Oklahoma has long had a high rate of female incarceration. How does that impact our community as a whole? Well, I think that when we have people incarcerated, um, they are not able to participate. There are, very, there are very few programs actually in our prisons, and so they're unlikely to be growing or getting better. Um, they're kind of stuck. And so when they come out, um, not only has the world changed because time has passed, um, but th the world has changed and they really haven't. Uh, you know, in terms of skills and abilities and um, knowing how to do life better or different. And so I think that, of course, you know, it makes it much harder to get employed. So that has a huge impact on our community. Um, imprisonment tears families apart and you lose out on that shared history. And um, just, I think, you know, not just the, the love and, and all of that, but the protective factors that family provides. And so I think, you know, on the whole, from an economic, um, safety, social fabric, and all of those ways, uh, incarceration impacts our community. That's great to have that background. Thanks for sharing that as we start to talk more about Remerge and why you guys exist. So tell us who is eligible for Remerge's program? What does the program entail? And what kinds of resources does Remerge provide local moms? Sure, I should have added in my last answer that um, about 80% of women who are in prison in the United States are mothers. And so when we talk about um, women's imprisonment, we're also talking about mother's imprisonment. And as we know, mothers are key um, to families being successful and together and strong and healthy. And so that is why we specifically serve mothers at Remerge. Um, so we are serving women who have the ability to reunify with their minor children and they are facing felony charges. Um, and those are really our only two criteria for getting in the program. Uh, many of our mothers take a path of um, childhood or physical or sexual abuse or early childhood trauma that they have then begun to cope with by using drugs, which then led them into addiction, which then led them into justice involvement. And so that's not the story for every woman here. Um, lots of different pathways to getting to remerge, but I would say that that is a pretty typical path. And so a lot of our, our participants are facing um, pretty serious drug charges. This typically, if you get into remerge, like you said in your opening, we serve high risk, high need mothers. So we really are looking for those cases that other people might deem hopeless um, and trying to restore the, the hardest people to serve to our community. And tell us more about what the program looks like once you accept a mom into your program. What happens from there and what kinds of resources are available to her? It takes about two years to get through our program. It's very intense. Um, we try to focus on every area of a person's life because we know that if we um, you know, work on her parenting skills and her addiction recovery, but we fail to f provide her with education or employment or secure housing, that she is very likely to become just as involved again. And so we work really hard on providing holistic care. Um, women come in and they go through a four phase, pro it's a four phase program. So in that first phase, it's really about stabilization they live in secure housing, supervised housing um, for about 90 days. Sometimes it's a little bit longer than that. 
And then in the second phase, they moved to a sober living house, like an Oxford house, or, or there are many other partners throughout the city. Um, and then after that, we work on getting them into independent housing. And as they're in our program, they are learning parenting skills. They're working on addiction recovery. They are working on getting their GEDs. They are working on going to career tech or getting you know, into an associate's degree if that's what they're interested in. Um, we work and match them with employers and try to get them into not just jobs, but into careers. Um, we work on their physical health. And so that might be medical and dental. Uh, they also have to do 30 minutes of exercise every day because we know that that's an important piece to recovery. Um, and uh, I know I'm probably leaving out several things that we do, but but we really do try to take a, a holistic view and help mothers uh, be prepared to stand on their own and be healthy in every in every area of their life. I left out, uh, which I can't not mention. Um, a lot of the work that we do is mental health related, and so we have some great mental health partners, but. Um, it is very common for our mothers to come in and have a very low sense of worth. And um, it's even hard to accept our help for, for a little bit usually because they think, well, why are you bothering? I'm not worth it. And so we have to slowly brick by brick build that sense of purpose and that sense of worth up in a person again. And, and that just takes time. And, and they, are the, they are the architects of that and they're doing the hard work. But we really try to provide the, the opportunity and the space and the love and the listening ears to help them to do that. So really, this is totally an alternative to them going to prison. And, and like you said, I love that you said it, it's holistic services to really restore them to the community and help them learn how to be confident, capable citizens that, uh, that will go on to impact our community, impact their kids in a positive way, and heal from a lot of the trauma that they may have endured in their lives. Yeah, absolutely. Remerge's mission is not just to help one woman, but to disrupt the cycle of intergenerational poverty and incarceration and addiction. And the way that we do that best, we believe, is by targeting mothers who can then set a different example for their families and for their children. That's so powerful. Um, Riri Lunsford wrote for us a really impactful article about Remerge last March. And one of the many things I loved about her work was that she addressed those misconceptions about women who are incarcerated. And the reality is for the women you serve, these are moms just like other moms, but who have likely had a very hard time in, in some capacity or another who have likely endured some trauma and maybe not had access to the resources that other moms in our community have had in their lifetimes. What is it that you most want people in the community to know about the moms you serve? Erin, I think just like me and you, they're just women. They're just people and they really could be our sisters or our friends or our neighbors. Um, they have just had a tough time and, you know, I think there are very few of us these days that have not been touched by addiction in some way. And they are people who were touched by addiction and I, it is so hard to beat. It is really the struggle of your life and we're help, here to help them win that fight, but they really could be anyone and it is amazing what can happen when you provide treatment for two years for someone versus um, them going and being incarcerated and tearing our families apart, our communities are stronger when we provide treatment, their individual lives are stronger, and our generations are stronger, and treatment works. Um, the other thing that I would really like for people to know is that our outcome, not only do we cost less for the state of Oklahoma, so actually, we're privately funded, so the state doesn't um, fund our program, but we are much cheaper than it costs to incarcerate someone, and um, we have way better outcomes. So people are employed, they're reunified with their kids, they're participating in our community, and you know, 
there go I, but for the grace of God. Um, and I think that that, you know, it could be any one of us and we all des deserve the treatment that we need. That's so powerful, Jenna. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so we are getting a little bit of a look into your brand new facility that opened in 2019 and you open this facility specifically to be able to serve more women. Um, you have served 149 graduates, impacted more than 370 children, and like you mentioned, have saved the state of Oklahoma $32 million. Those statistics are so impressive. But will you share what the impact of Remerge looks like specifically for some of your graduates? How are their lives changed? Oh, yes, I love that question. Um, I think that they will tell you that they are reliable people now that their families can count on and that that feels pretty amazing to be dependable and to be reliable. They are hard workers. Um, we have employers that are top, that talk about our graduates as the workforce that everyone wants because they're excited to have those jobs. Um, they have already done a lot of self-examination while they're here with us at Remerge. And so it makes them curious and driven and hardworking and a good communicator. Um, so they're great employees. Um, they're great moms. Uh, you know, I think when you have to go through, you have to first learn, I think, when you're in addiction to be patient and loving towards yourself and forgive yourself. That's a lot of hard work as any of us who've ever tried to forgive ourselves. Um, and so they've done a lot of that work. And so I think that it makes them great parents. And um, we have seen them become, I actually have one graduate who is now working for the Oklahoma County DA, the office that actually prosecuted her. Um, and so it's, you know, they, they are rising and driving forward and participating in our community and living happy, full lives. That's so wonderful. I love hearing that. Um, and I think you're so right that that piece, in addition to mental health treatment, just their ability to learn that they are worthy and that they are enough. Um, that's such a foundational key piece of what you guys do that makes really a lifelong difference for the, these moms and for the next generation for their kids. So you guys have a lot of exciting things going on. We do. You have cooked up, terrible pun intended, a new <laughs> program called Catalyst Cookies. And this helps Remerge participants gain essential job skills and prepares them for the workforce like you were just talking about. So what was the inspiration behind this program? Well, we wanted to run a social enterprise program because we wanted our participants to be running a business and it to feel very authentic um, and uh, for them to get, so work experience and is so important for so many of our moms. Our moms leave home at an average age of 15 and they don't get to us until an average age of 31. So for a lot of them, they have either had kind of um, intermittent workforce experience and probably a lot of that was at fast food or kind of jobs like that, um, cleaning jobs, things like that. And so they have not necessarily been in a business environment um, or ever been taught, you know, essential career skills. And so um, we wanted to have a program that would teach them that, but where they would be taking responsibility for it and have responsibility for selling the product and Honestly, cookies just seemed like fun and like something moms would do. Um, <laughs> and they are. Mondays are terrible for my waistline around here because the entire 16,000 square foot sells like warm baked cookies. Mm. So, um, but yeah, so it's been a great program for our moms. I think that we went in kind of with the expectations that they would be gaining career skills like teamwork and communication and problem solving. Um, and of course, learning to bake, but the baking is really beside the point. We don't want them to all go out and be bakers for life or anything. Um, we want them to learn what it's like to run a business. And so they also run the social media. Um, they try to come up with marketing plans and, um, 
they do all the inventory supply management. So they really are running the business and we wanted to give them that experience. Um, so the expectation was that they would learn those things, but I think what we didn't expect was the sense of pride and ownership that they would take. And it is really fun. I have, I had a person who, when she started, would not look anybody in the eye, um, would barely, like you could barely hear her. You'd have to say, huh? Cause she was spoke so low. Um, and she's a completely different person. And it started with catalyst cookies. Cause that's the first thing they do when they get into our program. And she came up to me about eight weeks into the program and said, Jenna, did you know that I am the best dough maker here? I can make dough faster than anybody else. And she actually got so good at that job that she, at her job at Catalyst Cookies that she ended up running the kitchen when our coordinator was on vacation. So it has far exceeded our expectations of, of what that program would mean to our women. I love that. And I love just having been on the outside watching this program come to fruition the sense of ownership that I just, as a, a person in the community who loves cookies, the sense of ownership that I can feel that that team of moms has and the pride that they have in their work has really been incredible to watch. And most important question of the day, of course, what's your favorite cookie flavor? Oh, definitely salted caramel is my favorite. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Excellent choice. It has these like very thick flakes of salt on top that are just the, the perfect topping. So good. And I have to take a minute to brag on Catalyst Cookies some more. So I ordered boxes of half dozen cookies for my kids' teachers for Teacher Appreciation Week. And the presentation on these cookies is incredible. They come in these darling boxes wrapped up with these beautiful blue bows. The cookies are individually wrapped inside. It has a card that tells more about Remerge and is actually signed by the mom who baked them. I mean, really, these are incredible. They were a huge hit with the teachers, the presentation and the delicious cookies. And they make great gifts or for events or party favors, holidays, like really you can't go wrong with <laughs> ordering these cookies anytime for any reason, but you do have to order them ahead of time. So tell us more about the process for ordering and picking them up. Sure, you can go online um, at catalystcookies.org and you just have to order. We only bake on Mondays because as we've talked about, our moms are doing all kinds of other things and learning other skills throughout the week. Um, so we don't want to just become a cookie factory. So we only bake on Mondays, which I realize can be um, a little bit hard to remember sometimes. So mark Mondays down in your calendar as cookie day. And you just have to put in your order before, before that Monday um, and then be able to come and pick them up. We are open until 6 for pickup. And uh, we also, though, realizing that that might not work for everybody, have started a frozen cookie dough option. So you can come and pick up our delicious um, cookies in frozen dough form and pop them into your own oven whenever you would like. And you can pick those up at any time. So those are walk-in. You can just come and get those um, at any time. So whenever you're craving cookies, there is an option available for you. Yeah, I have to admit, I was super excited about the cookie dough option also. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been giving that out as gifts because it's, well, I work here, so it's super easy to just be like, oh my gosh, I need to take something. Here, have some cookies. That's um, a great gift idea. That would be great for housewarming or somebody who's just had a baby really in if you're out gift. there looking for gifts to give to new homeowners in this market that's perfect okay so now that we're all salivating for cookies and planning out our orders tell us what else is coming up for remerge what is your vision for the next year well we have some fun things coming up in the immediate next few months so on august 9th we are having draft day um, and that is for a new career pathway that we are creating for our moms. We have about 10 people who will, are going to be taking a coding camp. Um, and there are two pathways that they can pick within that camp. So um, they can either become kind of a software developer, coder, or an IT project manager. Um, and it really is kind of dependent on 
you know, what, whatever you're better at, but also personality fit. And do you want a people or do you want to um, write lines of code? And so we're really excited to do that. We're going to, we have about four employers that have signed on to take our moms as unpaid in, or as, sorry, as paid interns um, after they have completed. And then we are also paying them for their training time. So as they're in class, four hours a night, we will provide on site childcare and um, we'll be paying them like it's their job because what we don't want them to do is be trying to work, you know. Uh, a minimum wage job and not have childcare and trying to maintain their sobriety and work our their program requirements and also be trying to learn. Um, so we have told them that they, we want them to treat this like it's their job. And so we're just so excited to be launching that. Um, we'll be doing a few more career pathways like that throughout the year. So we plan on doing one in automotive, uh, the automotive industry for people who like to work with their hands, and then uh, in nursing. And so we're, we're really excited to have those three pathways open up in the next year. And um, our focus really is on not just, our moms are required to have a job before they graduate, but we don't want them to just have a job. We want them to have a career that they can continue to grow and have family sustaining wages and have a sense of purpose and love what they do. So, um, yeah, we're thrilled that that's coming up in August and we're going to make a big deal about it and um, it's going to be like a sports draft day. So you can watch us on social media for that. And then in August, we are having our annual luncheon and that is August 26th. So the night before we have an event called Roses for Recovery on the 25th and that is where you can come and you can buy a ticket and invite your friends and you, uh, we have a florist come in and teach you how to make a floral arrangement. And so you make one for your home and then one to, to go to the event the next day. Um, and then our luncheon is the 26th and that's going to be at the Oklahoma City um, Golf Club. And we're really excited. We, it's our 10 years, so we're celebrating our 10th birthday this year. And we've invited um, a woman named Tonya Kane is going to be our keynote speaker. And she was arrested 86 times um, and got into a program finally that was very much like Remerge mm -hmm. and completely changed her life. And now she is a national trauma expert and a filmmaker. And so she's going to be our keynote. So we would love for any of you to, that want to come to our luncheon and hear her speak to come. And then she'll be screening her film that evening um, as well and doing a little Q&A with the audience about her film. So we're, we're very excited about August 26th. It's going to be a, a fun day. Um, but I think our vision over the next three years really is we certainly would like to continue to grow to serve more women. Um, that takes more dollars because we need more people on staff um, to be able to serve them and to provide the services that, that they need. So what I didn't mention is that Remerge um, helps pay for their housing, uh, their clothing, their food, um, their gas if they need it, uh, their everything for a while. And then as they become more independent in our program, they start assuming some of that responsibility. Um, but we, and we also help graduates who may be in an emergency situation and just, you know, instead of losing their job, it's between losing their job or getting a new tire, then Remerge would kick in and, and pay for the tire um, so that they can continue to get to work. So it takes a lot of money to make that happen. Uh, and so we are looking to grow our funding streams and also the number of people that we serve. Um, we are also going to continue to focus on expanding our career opportunities for moms. Um, as I said, joblessness is the number one biggest reason why people reoffend. And so it's so important to our moms and their well being and our community as well. Um, that we provide people with good job opportunities. And so we're going to continue to focus on that. And then we have really also been working hard and will continue to work hard at um, keeping connection and using our new space 
to provide a home and activities for our graduates. So we know that we don't want to be like, uh, okay, you graduated, congratulations, we'll never see you again. <laughs> we want to continue to be their family and their support system and the place that they go when things are going great and they need someone to cheer with them and celebrate with them or maybe when they need help and they need someone to hold their hand or say you got this um, we want to be that place for our graduates and so as our graduates con community continues to grow uh, past about 150 people and um, we just have to be really intentional about providing programming and opportunities for them to get together and um, also to continue to grow in their own careers or you know, sometimes when they were in program, they had a, a three-year-old and now they might have a 13-year-old. And so parenting is very different for that. So um, just providing opportunities for them to feel included and, and like their support system is still here. So there are, there are lots of ways for people in the community to get engaged with all the things you are doing from ordering cookies or stopping by to grab some cookie dough, coming to events, looking into financial donations and, and maybe volunteering as well. What's the best place for people to, to find out more about how they could plug in to support Remerge? Our website is probably the best place to go. So that's Remerge, R-E-M-E-R-G-E. -E -E. I think I spelled that right. Remergeok.org. Um, and you can also follow us. We're on Instagram and Facebook and a lot of things that are happening. Um, we stream events live quite a bit, so you can get on our Facebook and, and watch um, graduations and things like that that are super impactful. So we would invite you to come there and, and hear more stories about Remerge Moms there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jenna, for joining me today. Thank you for the incredible work that you and your team do in our community. And special thanks, too, to all the hardworking moms that you serve. Well, thank you so much for having me. I always love to talk um, cookies and Remerge Mother Warriors, so we appreciate the opportunity to share. Absolutely. Two perfect topics. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. Join us next time on Raising OKC Kids.